States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Mr. Blair, would you like to introduce our guest this evening? I'd be happy to. It's nice to see a full house here this evening. <laughs> Thank you for joining us. <coughs> With us tonight, we have Pat Theodore representing our administrators. We have Martha Shoemaker as well as Linda Braley back in the doorway representing our teachers. Alan Walensky from the Board of Finance as well as the chair of our school building committee. Paul Patron. Is Jeff Johnson here tonight from the London Day? And it looks like we have a lot of family and friends as well as a number of our staff members here tonight for presentation of curriculum. So welcome. First item of business we have this evening is to recognize some students. But before we do that, you'll notice around the room we have a great deal of work on display. Each and every month we have uh, uh, work from our students that we feature from each of our schools throughout the Waters of Public Schools. And tonight we have wonderful student work from the Great Next School. April Brown, who's one of our art teachers, I'd like to acknowledge her for the work uh, and the displays around the room. There's artwork from every grade. There's writing samples from every grade, uh, as well as some special celebrations that the students were engaged in over the course of the year, as well as uh, some grade five student work from the Civil War reenactment, as well as the Westwood expansion. So congratulations to all the students at Great Net and the staff. Uh, for their assistance in the development of the work. And we have four students from Waterford High School that we would like to recognize this evening for the CAVE Student Leadership Award. And I'd like to uh, welcome uh, Mr. Macrino, who has a few kind words for each of our four uh, students that were recognized. Two? Yes. Two. Two. Well, I'd like to first invite Audrey Tripp to come forward. Uh, it, it's really a pleasure to uh, introduce this young lady and soon a young man to the audience here tonight. And really, they represent a culmination of all the good work that's done in the work for public schools. And I have a listing of her accomplishments, and I think that all of us can sort of sit back and just be amazed at all of the accomplishments she has achieved so far. And she's got miles to go. So this is a listing. Uh, Audrey is a uh, uh, CAP scholar. Uh, she's been a member of the Honor Roll at Waterford High School every semester. She's been the Rotary Student of the Year. Uh, she's been involved in JV field hockey, varsity <coughs> field hockey. Uh, she's been JV and varsity lacrosse, varsity track and field. And um, she uh, continues to pursue a career in sports when she has time. Uh, <laughs> Her community service uh, involves volunteering over uh, 145 hours, assisting the Waterford High School Boys Wrestling Team, uh, and volunteering at the Groton Regency Home. Her outside interests include uh, painting, anything to do with the outdoors, and reading. Her work experience has been at Philomena's Restaurant in Cross Town Ferris. Her post-secondary plans are to pursue a nursing career at the University of Connecticut, and uh, her future plans are to do whatever it is that nursing takes her to. We're very, very proud of this young lady, and she's a fine representative of Waterford High School. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to present you with the award, and I'll read it. The Connecticut Association of Boards of Education awards Student Leadership Award to Audrey Tripp, Waterford High School. Great honor, and the Board of Education, congratulations. Keep up the good work. Thank you. The next awardee is William Sullivan. <laughs> He's been busy. So William, also another wonderful representative of uh, of the town of Waterford in uh, Waterford High School, and here are just a few of his accomplishments. Um, he 
He has uh, been a member of the Honor Roll all four years at Rutherford High School. He's received the Excellence Award in Business, and he's been the Rotary Student of the Year. Other awards include uh, Daughters of the American Revolution with Citizenship Award, uh, Grade 12 Eastern Connecticut Chamber of Commerce Leadership Award, Grade 11 ECC 2011 Golf Sportsmanship Award. His school activities include class president, uh, a member of the Wind Power Feasibility Study Project, he was a community liaison. Uh, he's a member of the golf team, uh, Waterford High School Leadership Program, he's been very involved in that. His community service includes being a member of the cleanup crew for Pleasure Beach, we all appreciate that. <laughs> uh, and he was an intern for a mayoral campaign in the local community. Uh, and uh, he was involved in strides for handicap, the strides for handicap race. His hobbies include golf, as you might imagine. He has a keen interest in politics and business. He loves going to the beach, don't we all? <laughs> uh, he loves watching any sport. Uh, and his work experience includes uh, being the lot boy at MJ Sullivan Automotive. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 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 His most secondary plans are to attend American University and continue to expand his interest in politics. His career interests are to work in finance on Wall Street uh, and staying involved in politics. And we are equally as proud of this young man, and he's just a great representative. <laughs> And it's such a pleasure to present you with this Student Leadership Award from the Connecticut Association of Board of Education and the Waterford Board of Education is very proud of you. Thank, Thank you. you. Congratulations. We have two middle school students and Mr. Sachs is going to introduce those students. Thank you. It is my pleasure to introduce two students this evening character and smile, part of our classrooms and always every single day. It's a pleasure to see them walking through the school and the classroom and I play a deal. Um, Mr. Capasso wrote the summary for the first student. There's one of us, Beverly. Mr. Capasso is one of our fine mathematics teachers and he's a great writer as well. <laughs> so I will read what he said. There's Beverly, the model, student athlete who sets a shining example for all around her. Academically, she has made high honors every semester that she has attended Parkway. In eighth grade, she is finishing with a flourish. As usual, she has earned straight A's this entire year. Athletically, she is also at the very top of her class. She plays softball in town, in the town league, and represents Waterford as an all-star. She participates on various basketball drama teams, and she was a key player for the undefeated Parkway and the Cougars. She also led our soccer team to a perfect season, and she's a member of the prestigious South East Virginia soccer team. There is even more than an incredible student athlete. She's a wonderful, caring person who strives to make the environment at CLMS safe and enjoyable. She's an active member of our student council. She's a safe mentor who lives by our standard code. She took a leadership role in helping heartbeat and helped produce an exercise video with students <coughs> and staff, helping create a gold team PowerPoint presentation for graduation week. Finally, she regularly serves as a peer tutor and she's extremely helpful and supportive for their special needs. This young lady does it all in a warm, inclusive way. We are very proud of her. Congratulations. Once again, we're very proud to give you the Student Leadership Award at the middle school. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Come on. Good. Very proud to introduce to you, Kyle Hauser. Um, this is Saul Rokas. Every year, Park Lane Middle School hosts a career day, a day in which members of the community speak to students about their profession. One such presentation was given by a reporter from the internet news site called Pass.com, who encouraged students to submit their writing <laughs> to the site. Kyle was not in the room that day, but a friend told him about the opportunity, and Kyle jumped on the chance. There was own dreams of becoming a sports writer one day. Tyler wrote a piece entitled Pass On at School, which he submitted to the Pass editor. His writing was given a thumbs up and he was posted on the popular site. The highest compliment a writer can achieve is that he caused people to think in a new way, which based on the way many comments were, he certainly did. Curiosity, perseverance, 
kindness and humility are all the qualities of, of merit and astute. And proudly exemplifies these in many ways. He is a bright and lead to example at Clark Lane. An honorable student, Tyler is currently excelling in geometry. The school's most accelerated math course. Also, he's always ready to lend a helping hand. Tyler really shines in water for community. On his own initiative, he volunteers to score the water for North League softball game and helps elderly neighbors with general household duties, giving them a friend who's always there when they need it. He also plays baseball for the Waterford Bay Group Senior League and the Waterford Travel Team. Tyler is a person who works hard to set an example for others, whether in the classroom, at my field, or in his room. Congratulations. We're very delighted to thank you with the Student Leadership Award from the Connecticut Association of Boards of Ed and the Western Board of Education. We also have a young lady from the second grade that would like to recognize tonight from uh, the Great Neck Elementary School, and I know Ms. Fedor has a few words of introduction. Probably well, we should let Annie do this. She's better at it. <laughs> Annie, would you like to come up? Um, I know in a few short years, Mr. McPhee and Mr. Sachs will be bringing Annie back up here. <clears throat> she got a start two years ago as a kindergartner when she won the contest where she got to be principal for a few hours. And she did a phenomenal job. <laughs> <laughs> it was such a relaxing day for me. <laughs> but this year, Annie had the opportunity to enter a contest and it's called CHET and it's the Connecticut Higher Education Trust and at, at the second grade level the students were asked to write a few words but to illustrate what they wanted to be when they grew up and how they would change the world. So Annie, would you like to tell them what you decided to do? I wanted to be a kindergarten teacher. Annie, how do you think that will help you in the world? I think so Right, and we're very proud of Annie and um, the staff of Great Nets has a gift for you, and when you look inside, it's something to help you keep writing and drawing until you come back and either take my job or do <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations, Sandy. It's such a pleasure to give you this award and keep up all that good work you're doing. Thank you. I have to say, this is the best time for the Board of Education. All of the members are always saying this is our delight to see our students achieving so well and to receive all these leadership awards. So thank you all for being here tonight. You're more than welcome to continue to stay for the rest of the Board of Education meeting, but we'll recess for a few moments if you so choose to get up. <laughs> Um, we're back to the meeting. Are there any comments from the public at this time? Yes. Would you please identify yourself? Um, Ron Ross, uh, former Ross
and I would uh, like to see the best of that. Yes, um, it's at your pleasure, but yes. So, um, I, I was an honor student in high school, and um, however, I did still have a few classes that were uh, heterogeneous, mainly uh, civics. Um, my, in my freshman year, I was in advanced French and so on. And a lot of times, a lot of wide range of people get thrown into advanced French. Um, so, I am personally against uh, heterogeneous. I think that they harm uh, the, the quality of the educational experience that uh, students get, especially uh, students on the upper end, the high achievers, the medium high achievers. Um, so one example I can give this is the civics class at Harvard High School. The civics class at Harvard High School is a required class in the public mill, and it, there's no practice to it. And unfortunately, since everyone has to pass a civics class, this means the civics class is not as academically rigorous as it could be. Um, now, I realize that some students' needs are not up for, or are not up for the challenge of say an honest class. However, this also means that the honest students, especially those that are interested in government work and how our political system works are missing out on an excellent opportunity, uh, which would be to participate in an honors level uh, civics course or perhaps even the AP, an AP government course um, to learn more about how our government works. Um, instead, they're delegated to the same class, which is not challenge, nearly challenging enough for them and leaves much to be desired. Similarly was the uh, experience with French. Since, because um, coming out of the middle school, sometimes the, the teachers aren't unsure where whether what students in advanced or honors French, a lot of good students go into advanced French and not honors. Um, and I saw this in my advanced class. And so you had, you had the students that were struggling with French that you know, really needed uh, a slower paced class that would, you know, help them learn the basics and get that foundation down. Then you have the, the, the more advanced students in the same class, which, all, which were, you know, bored and could have been learning French at an accelerated pace um, and ending up having a better grasp of French at the end of the year and at the end of their school career. And it's difficult for a teacher to handle this, um, from what I've seen, because they can't tailor specifically to the higher end students, because then they're moving too fast for the lower end students. And if they tailor to the lower end students, then the higher end students get the hurt and the potential. And so this becomes a problem. Realistically, it's very difficult to have a single class that is two classes at which is which is what essentially a lot uh, much of the many of the articles about heterogeneous grouping suggest, which is for the teacher to tailor to an individual student, and that becomes that becomes that becomes very hard, especially in larger classes. So track classes, track classes fundamentally work work much better both for the higher achievers and for the lower achievers because the teacher can focus can focus their attention on the needs of the students and not have a wide uh, array of students that they would tell us. Well, thank you for your comments. We appreciate hearing from you. Thank you. That will move us. Any other comments? Oh, excuse me. Any other comments from the public at this time? Hearing none, we'll move to our consent agenda. 
Um, I just want to make one correction for the board. The health insurance year-to-date claim summary is not in your packet. It's not here this evening. So in approving that, you'll eliminate the health insurance year-to-date summary. Um, are there any questions or comments concerning the consent agenda? Make a motion to accept the consent agenda minus the. Uh, <coughs> Thank you, Kevin. Is there a second to that? Second, second by Jody. It'll include the minutes, the monthly expenditure report for April, the food service report for February and March, and our write off accounts receivable from the year 2010 to 11. All those in favor of the motion, please say aye. Uh, aye. Anyone opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you very much. Will take us to the reading and the review of correspondence received. <coughs> Thank you. A great deal of correspondence uh, for tonight's uh, meeting. You have in front of you some cards and postcards that have been received, and each board member has a copy, uh, including a postcard from our chair who was abroad at our last meeting. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Glad you're back. Thank you. A <coughs> um, couple of other things. Um, and uh, I always appreciate when I think of other as a topic on the agenda. We learned today that um, Yuan Chen at Waterford High School, one of our guidance counselors, has been recognized as the Counseling Professional of the Year in the state of Connecticut yeah. through NEA. Yeah. And that's a very well-deserved honor. And uh, we're very proud of her and the great work that she does. <coughs> I wanted to point that out this evening. We also have in the audience tonight Linda Braley, who has been recognized as Connecticut College's first annual cooperating teacher of the year. And that's something that Linda has done for a number of years, taking on a student teacher into her classroom. So congratulations, Linda. Um, also uh, wanted to uh, present to the board tonight uh, that I've received a petition uh, from 62 members of the Waterford community uh, mentioning their concern around class size in grade 5, in particular Oswagachi, and if you recall, as we went through the budget process, that was a hot spot that I had identified during the budget process. So I just wanted to I have the petition, and I'll present it to the board chair. And we have 62 uh, signatures on that petition. We also have uh, received uh, a formal date of June 25th for the uh, high school construction project to be reviewed at the State Department. So that will take place on the 25th of June. And that was just set this week. So that's the correspondence. Great. Thank you for the cards. And since you touched upon it, I just wanted to, it's not really under correspondence, but I wanted to thank Jody, as you brought up my absence for uh, entering and for conducting the meeting last month. Thank you, Jody. Um, with that, my correspondence is just, I don't know if this was signed correctly, but it's a letter from Kate that I received on May 17th, just reminding us about our membership with the Connecticut Association of Boards of Education. Um, and then for our file, which is around, I have a couple of uh, magazines from planning and management with the school. Do you, do you receive that, Mr. Billy? You must receive yes. those planning minutes. But I'll leave copies here for the board of ed members if you're interested in taking a look. And that's all my correspondence. Um, that takes us right to your report, superintendent's report. Uh, first update that I'd like to provide is our transition from uh, first student to um, Student Transportation of America. Uh, Ron Melnick has had uh, three different meetings with representatives from the company along with Barbara Brigham. And if you recall at our last meeting, Ron thought we might have one of the newer school buses here this evening. Right. They will be arriving in June, so we'll set aside some time so that you have a chance to take a look uh, at the new buses. We're right on track for a very uh, smooth transition from one company to the other. In fact, representatives of the company, and, and whether it's a marketing employee or not, uh, Ron and I feel pretty strongly with this. They've shared what a great transition it's been, mm -hmm. and they've really been at our disposal. Uh, personnel are in place. Uh, summer school transportation they'll be providing. And uh, we'll be meeting in again, uh, again in a few weeks, and we'll be reviewing all of the bus routes during the summer uh, with a new software package, which is part of the contract. So I just wanted to report that this evening. 
So as an update with uh, one of the options in the recently negotiated contract with our teachers, uh, we have 53 members who have opted for the high deductible health plan, otherwise known as the health savings account. And for a first year transition, I think that's uh, a great number. And so uh, that's in place. Um, whether you realize it or not, it's been a pretty uh, busy end of the year. I think we have multiple activities scheduled in Waterford on a nightly basis. And I um, uh, just wanted to highlight uh, a few of them. Um, last night, I had the opportunity to attend the induction for the National Honor Society. There was also the middle school concert. It was great that it was in the same venue and I could go from one activity to the next. Um, we just had a, a great community production of uh, Les Mis and well attended and raised reviews uh, around town in regards to that. Um, we do have an important meeting of the school building uh, committee on June 19th, which will necessitate a special meeting of the Board of Ed. One of the things we learned in the renovation status review is that first the school building committee needs to take action, followed by the Board of Ed, and it all has to occur prior to our review. Our review is on June 25th. So our hope is on the same night, immediately after the school building committee, that we could pull together a quorum of the board uh, to approve phase three, which is renovation status, uh, the furniture, uh, the FF&E package as well as the technology package because that will all be reviewed on June 27th. So things are happening quickly um, in anticipation of our move uh, early 2013. So um, I think yeah, I, excellent. And I think it's a, a very good suggestion. I know Jody will be out already mm -hmm. on the 19th and Alan's here can tell us. I, I think that what the meeting is usually about an hour, an hour and a half. Yeah. So we could uh, maybe make the suggestion for the Board of Education to have its meeting, a uh, quick special meeting to be in compliance on June 19th, if that's favorable to the Board. Is that okay, do you think? It would probably be yeah. for a, mm -hmm. a half hour. So would we set that at 7? Or would it be? What do you think would be safe, Mr. Walensky? Uh, we're going to present a furniture package to the board, uh, to the school building committee to approve. That could be somewhat lengthy, but if anybody can show up early, that would take some of the onus off of duplicating that information. Uh, under normal circumstances, if we're looking at FFNE, I would assume that the meeting was called at one an hour and a half. Uh, so seven o'clock. Seven o'clock. Seven Okay. I would think that the will take some Right. So 7 o'clock, we'll say, and of course the board's invited to attend if they can come Absolutely. in early to listen. It would be, I, I really think it would be uh, helpful that many people could be uh, at, the, at the team meeting so that we don't have to. Uh, right. So if that's all right with the board, then we're going to mark down June 19th. Okay, thank you. I also wanted to remind the board of a retiree reception uh, that is co-sponsored next week by the Waterford Federation of Classroom Teachers and the Board of Ed. It will be held over at the Great Neck Country Club, and uh, that is next Thursday, I believe, at 4.30. So we're looking forward to a, a great attendance and a great celebration. We've also highlighted for you uh, in your Friday note the various fifth grade promotions as well as the, sixth, uh, the eighth grade promotion at Clark Lane and ending the year on the 15th with the Waterford High School graduation. So those are some of the important features uh, between now and the end of the year. I also wanted to, uh, to point out that our students did very well in the University of Delaware uh, 2012 Jazz Festival. Um, it's a festival, it's not a competition, and um, awards are uh, given out, however, for best overall in the area of saxophones, trumpets, trombones, rhythm section, and soloists. And uh, bands uh, were there from Delaware, Maryland, Pennsylvania, and Connecticut. And Waterford High School was recognized with the best rhythm section. Both John Thomas and Anthony Smitty won outstanding soloist awards, and Nathaniel Ross and Casey Briggs received the Bravo Awards from the judges. So. We're very proud of that. Last month, we hosted students from the Pro Start program. They had a wonderful experience, 
in Baltimore, although I heard they didn't bring home the gold, they learned a lot and had a great experience. So that's also uh, worthy of reporting. Um, the other thing that I wanted to mention to the board, uh, going through the School Reform Act uh, that the legislature just was engaged in, uh, they have uh, requested various districts to engage in the pilot of the new teacher evaluation program. And certainly here in Waterford, uh, for us with our evaluation system, it's timely. We haven't uh, really uh, updated the evaluation system and uh, knowing that we have a couple of very key figures here in Waterford that represent us at the legislature, I think it would be worthy for us to uh, be part of that pilot. And one of the things that we uh, need to do is get a thumbs up from the Board of Education before we um, uh, said to the state that would be one of the districts that would be willing to pilot. I think we could learn a lot and share a lot with the state and uh, they would be providing the training and Craig and I have had a chance to take a look at it and we received a communication today, the night of a board meeting, and indicated that we would need to run it by the board and get a thumbs up from you for uh, involvement in that uh, particular venture. Uh, uh, the state will help with the training and the provision? They'll provide all the training. Mm -hmm. So the wonderful aspect is that we get pre-professional development for our administrators as well as our, our faculty uh, in the area of this new system. Uh, we'll be looking to pilot the state model. Um, we would have a choice <coughs> to develop our own system using state guidelines or to use the state model. I think by having us pilot the state model, um, we could give the, the state some, uh, some helpful insight if they need to adjust anything before it becomes uh, enacted for all. Uh, but the notion that we would be getting some really key professional development is really the attractive feature here. So the, the, uh, you know, the wonder is you're being a pilot, but this has come from great benefits. And, and is that, do they come to us or to have us. that can work? Yeah. Okay. Jody? Are these teachers that put the system together or? Statewide committee. Mm -hmm. Okay. But they're, they're educational professionals, not accountants and all these other people that really don't know teaching. The statewide committee is uh, one of the things um, uh, a law that was enacted uh, through the legislature, um, signed by the governor. Um, we have not done a revamp of our teacher evaluation system since 1998. And we are right for uh, a full overhaul anyways. So again, seeing what's out there um, and then, you know, us having the chance to experience the state model might then tip our hand and we want to continue with the state model or do we want to customize it for us at more trade because the law allows us the two options. And rather than have something done to us, I would prefer to uh, participate and have a voice in it, quite frankly. So I'm in favor of doing this, but I just want to make sure that we have the right professionals that are doing this, not politicians and people that really don't know education. So we can really get a good grasp on what we're supposed to be doing. Um, may I just ask, sure. are there some particulars that we can receive to understand after the training pieces in place and that we're free to, is, is there interference on the state's part as how you implement those evaluation pieces or are we free to choose and to, if we enter into, the, what what form of commitment do we have if we enter into the pilot? pilot. The parameter would be to pilot the system and then to provide input uh, to in that pilot. Uh, the benefit for us is that we would be receiving the professional development. Uh, the benefit for us is we would really fully, because we would to understand the state pilot, and then we can choose after the pilot to adopt the state model or to create a Waterford value teacher evaluation system, uh, which might be a uh, adjustment off of that state model. So it doesn't mean that we'll be selected. Well, that's it. And, but I was just more concerned with who these favorite 
but there, our, our personnel that would still be doing our the evaluation. Yeah. Yeah. That's the benefit that our we principals will be receiving the training. Right. So you're correct. Our principals will still be doing the evaluation. Okay, that was where I was going. But uh, are there any other comments from this board? So what, what do we submit if the board decides mm -hmm. on that? John? That is my intent. Correct me if I'm wrong. At some point, I don't know what year, what school year, we are going to be obligated to either use the model mm -hmm. or to develop a model based on guidelines that are going to be given to us. Is that correct? And what school what school year is they they plan to mandate this? Really, right after the, the pilot, so it's really uh, probably a, a year and a half or two years ago where we have to adopt. Mm -hmm. uh, and the what role does the federation play in in this product? This uh, a cooperative and they're, I mean, if the board says yes, are they on board with the Well, well, we need to have the conversation. Just hearing this afternoon, we needed to start with the board. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's just, uh, I'm sorry, it was just really to uh, get us into the production process if we're chosen. Um, the law did indicate that there's just a limited number of school districts that would be piloting this. Uh, that, uh, we just want to see if we did uh, part A. If we did mm -hmm. we and if we pilot this, does that actually, will that actually take the place of the current evaluation process if in that particular year? And, that, and if the Federation agrees to participate? I want to Dave and then Jody. Is that a comment? Or oh, Dan? Okay. Jody. So this, I just thought maybe Jerry can answer this. Does this include the friendship school also or just our school? Just our school. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think we're on the state radar and we'll have another matter set up. But this is advantageous to the development. And if the board's favorable, we'll uh, meet and talk with the Federation. And, and we'll, we'll be updated, the, the board will well. keep an update on the progress. We'll it's something that every school district is going to have to revamp. Yeah. It's I, I think it can be advantageous for us if we have a voice in mm. how we're proceeding. Mm -hmm. um, Kevin? Well, there, there are definitely advantages of having been at least in the front seat, if not necessarily in the driver's seat. Mm -hmm. um, and being able to see what's being developed and maybe help to guide things along if you think things are a little bit out of whack. So I think in that sense, <coughs> it makes a lot of sense that if we have the opportunity to involve the pilot to uh, go ahead and do that. No, yeah, I'd agree with that. That's the, the, the pilot seat's where to be. You, know, you, want, you want to be up front so you have a chance to influence and, and see what's coming at you. Yeah, it seems to me that we have consensus with the Board of Education to at least put our name in the hopper and see if we come up as one of the pilot programs. And the last thing that I just wanted to point out is um, <coughs> we also have some student recognition. Uh, uh, Chris Burnell and Bobby Cook, who participated in the New London Guitar Center uh, competition, and uh, at least as of May 16th, they were moving along in the competition. Mm -hmm. All right. What was the name of the competition? All of the blues. The Battle of the Blues. Heaven. Thank so you. maybe we'll have them perform at our next board meeting. Right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, and that's all I have Thank to report. <coughs> that brings us to our committee and your report. <coughs> um, the Youth Service Bill uh, has been very busy. Um, they're organizing the new all day camp with in conjunction with Rec and Park. They started the registration. Um, because this is new and um, the staff from the Youth Service Bureau is going to be working in the camp, they're not going to have any uh, programs at the Youth Service Bureau over the summer like they normally do. They're going to see how this all day camp works out. Uh, also, they wanted me to thank everybody that attended Dancing with the Stars. It was a huge success. Mm -hmm. And uh, because so many people liked it and they're requesting to have it again this coming year, they were thinking of maybe doing something different. But so many people really enjoyed it that I think we're going to do it again um, in 2013. 
Also, some of the money raised from that is going to go towards counseling because uh, they still have a huge uh, amount of, of uh, children that need uh, need counseling help. So they, they designated part of that money that they raised towards that. And I think that's it. Please give us that. Um, school buildings and Jerry hit on the on the high uh, high points. Um, so, so you could see that the school is coming along very well. It's really nice. Okay. You can go. <laughs> the friendship governing board, friendship school governing board, met on Monday. Um, I'm pleased to report that the transition program has gone uh, nicely during the springtime. Uh, the Waterford Kindergarten staff uh, came together with the kindergarten staff over at the Friendship School and the London's been partner to it looking at a standard space report card so that all three communities are, are similar in nature. Uh, also, uh, the Friendship School has hosted our, uh, our first grade uh, teachers to meet with their kindergarten staff. Mm -hmm. um, and it's nice. Uh, the program has been really well established this springtime to ensure a very smooth transition. One of the hopes we did have uh, related to transportation, uh, trying to have the Friendship School on the same schedule as our elementary schools. Uh, there's no way we can pull it off in time for the upcoming year. However, we've taken that as a high priority uh, early next fall. Uh, there's some modifications that we're going to need to do, and my hope is that we can do it because it can save us a few dollars in our budget support. The other report I had, uh, our parent liaison committee uh, met uh, Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday night, Tuesday night. And uh, we had two major goals this year. One was to host a community program. The focus was on anti-bullying. Um, and the uh, committee did uh, realize that goal. I would tell you that we were rather disappointed in the community turnout. We had a very small gathering over at the middle school uh, for that evening. The other goal we established was communication between and among uh, the various schools, which also includes the Friendship School. And I think uh, we made some tremendous strides in that area, as well as uh, uh, providing access to uh, email blasts for parents and electronic calendar to really coordinate the events. As a re result of this year's work, we identified uh, three meeting times next year rather than the frequency that we have been having the end of September, around budget time in January, and again in April. Mm -hmm. um, so that's where we ended for the year. Good group of parents. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Alan? Just a quick comment. For those of you who are going to get up in the next month, the building is trying to walk through the building before the regular school building is actually a free game that day. Uh, at 4 to 3, we're going to do a walk through the new building uh, and then do a submitted uh, table to uh, for the uh, party at the party up there. So, uh, if you really want to provide this road from 4 to 3, then we're going to do it. Thank you. No, Happy to receive that. Oh, I tried to get in the other day and didn't know where you were, so I couldn't find the way. way. So it's nice to know you're doing periodic uh, tours there. It's great for us and for the community. Uh, Tuesday. Tuesday, right. Oh. And the invitation just let us know where we're going to meet. Oh. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Please, Alan. On the third floor. <laughs> yeah, thank that's you. Perfect. Thank you. Going to the <laughs> I, I do just I just like to report that my term uh, comes to an end as, as the Metropath Advisory Board on June the 30th. So if any member of this board is interested in assuming that position, please let me know. Um, that will be come up for the next meeting. Another report, just the Waterford Education Foundation will offer another a scholarship again this year in honor of Judy Coggins. So. Wanted to report that, and I don't know, Jim, if you had anything you wanted to add. Okay, thank you. I think that takes. Oh, seven. Excuse me. Um, <coughs> just some uh, case. If anyone is interested, there is a uh, workshop. Sorry, Jim. Uh, During the day, uh, right? Day, June seventh, <laughs> one to four on collective bargaining. Um, and also, uh, we will be coming up. I don't have all the details on it right now. But on July 25th, will be a cave leadership um, 
Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank it takes us right to our new business uh, discussion regarding the world language curriculum update. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Craig Powers, uh, as well as Amanda Klein, our department head for world language, is also going to provide the board with an update. And really, uh, if you think about it, this was a goal that we established as a board. Mm -hmm. uh, as we implement new programs and as we take on new initiatives, that we come back and revisit the progress and then uh, what are the goals to continue to implement it in a highly successful way. So I'd like to uh, turn the, uh, this presentation over to Mr. Carl. So uh, a year ago, uh, we came to you with the New World Language uh, curriculum and uh, we said that our work was not done. And we outlined uh, areas of uh, common formative assessment, building rubric, pacing guides, and to continue strengthening uh, the cohesiveness uh, of the high school program. And uh, I just want to have our department head give us an update uh, of how we've done throughout the year and then to start a course for the 12th grade students. Um, in particular, how Wendy's on Craig's um, information. Um, just to highlight some of the things from the past year that we have worked on as a department. Um, one of the pilots is the resources for the new curriculum. Um, common exams for TLC work and the fact that we are involved in regional um, professional development in the area. So the first one is the, the resources um, that were purchased for us um, when we started the new curriculum. Um, we used in particular two um, specific online resources that have been quite beneficial to students. One of them is Live Mocha, and the second is called Yabla. Um, just to highlight Live Mocha, for example, it is an online resource where the students can go on to create an account, and each, um, each student is able to go on based on their level. So if they're a beginner student or an advanced student, they pick the level that they're in based on, obviously, the courses that they're enrolled in. And each level takes them through six units of study in French, Spanish, or um, Italian, German, there, there are tons of languages on Live Mocha that are available to them. Specifically in French and Spanish, they go on, they choose the level that they're in, and each level again is broken down into six units. Each unit has two lessons and a quiz, and then at the end of the six units, there's a course test that the kids can do. And each lesson and each unit is broken down into various components, and those components are there's a video dialogue where the kids are able to hear native speakers, and they're able to hear them interacting. They move on to a grammar section, which just focuses on the grammatical stuff of the language. There's a section on vocabulary, specific to that lesson. Um, they're also able to complete a writing activity and a reading activity based on the grammar and vocab from that unit. And then they're also able to do a role play, where they are taking on a role of a character using the language, and they're recording it. Um, and the benefit to that is that they can submit what they've reported so that a native speaker can then um, listen to and review what they've submitted. So it's not only their teachers who are able to, um, you know, hear, hear the things that they've done and see the work that they've done, but they can also submit it to a native speaker and get feedback um, based on what they've, what they've submitted. Um, and the second one is not lost. It's um, a variety of videos that the kids are able to watch. Um, native speakers from all areas of um, France, um, Canada, Mexico, Spain, Venezuela, ev everywhere where the languages are spoken. Um, the videos are different levels. Um, so these two resources in particular have been quite useful in our classes. And I'm really sorry, I forgot to use these to talk here as well. We represent with the French department. Um, our Spanish department has, um, we were able to purchase the online textbooks. Um, which have been used by all the students. The teachers have a variety of resources that come along with those online textbooks, um, and they have been quite useful. And then um, Mark and I and Parish decided that instead of textbooks, we would use more of the online resources, and then as well stick with storybooks, and sticking with our literacy initiative that we're working on in the school, the storybooks have come in very handy. The kids can read different excerpts from books, they talk about it, they're building vocabulary, and they're able to respond to questions. Um, so those are some of the resources that we 
were able to purchase and have integrated into our classes. Uh, in regards to common exams, we were able this year to work um, more closely with uh, the teachers of Park Lane. Uh, in particular, we worked on a level one common exam. Um, we came up with the format of the exam, how we were going to break down, and not just for level one, but for all the levels. Um, we came up with a listening. We, we basically broke it down and said, all right, there's going to be a listening component, speaking, reading, writing, and then a structure section for each exam that we create. We came up with the percentages for each section, how much we were going to, you know, what, what each section was going to be worth, which we'd never really done before, so we did that across all levels. Um, in particular, working with the middle school teachers, we created a level one exam, uh, and that level one exam was given at the middle school in January. And then we also created a common level one exam that was also just given last week at the middle school as their final exam. Um, after the midterms were given in January, we were able to do an item analysis where we took the level one from the high school and the level one from the middle school. And we did an item analysis, so that just basically helped us to see where the weaknesses were, where the strengths were, and to come together. And you know, we're going to use that information as we're building the exams in, in the future. Um, and also, as we create that final exam, that's going to help us place students a little bit more, um, place them better when they get to high school. Once they've taken the exam, there'll be one more piece of the puzzle of where kids should be, whether they should be in a level 1A class, whether they should be a 2 advanced or in a 2 honors class, for example. Um, during our PLC time this year, high school teachers and middle school teachers work collaboratively with our people. Um, she came back for year two and spent a lot of time working with us on creating CFAs, rubrics, we completed our facing guides for each of our courses, and we looked at anchor tests for writing assessments. So essentially from the midterm exam, we looked at the written assessments that the students had done, and we came up with what an exemplar looks like, what a position looks like, what a basic looks like, um, and we're working on doing those in, in um, the reading as well. Um, and then we created the common summative assessment. Um, in our department, we had a focus on literacy. We met with the literacy consultant and the basic skills coordinator who helped us work on our reading assessments. Um, so in other words, we have, obviously, we have the kids read in the foreign language, and then we want to come up with more open-ended questions that are tax like so we can stick with the school initiative of upgraded reading literacy in the school, um, which is obviously really important to our kids that, you know, we want to contribute that way and just get them used to seeing those types of questions and being able to answer them. Um, we participated in scoring for key tasks. We worked with the history teachers and so we went to scoring training so that we could grade our score um, for the pre tasks that the high school students took. And then we also participated in several webinars. Um, one of them in particular was on um, teaching strategies for the interpretive mode, so helping us to teach reading strategies to students of foreign language. Last thing is the regional CD. We participated in a facilitating and presenting at the regional CD, which involves how many schools? Okay. Um, and Janice Purcell, who's at middle school, and I acted as facilitators, and we had several schools, um, several teachers from Waterford representing as presenters. Dr. Foster was one. Janice presented. Um, Claire Latham presented. Um, and next year, we're kind of taking a, a lot of the work as well. And, um, I'm going to be a facilitator. Mark is well here to present again. Some of the topics that we um, presented and, and worked with were um, rubric design, developing oral proficiency, writing strategies, and internet resources. And the value of doing the regional feed day is that we actually have professional development that was here to do us, which in the past, we've gone to professional development that doesn't necessarily touch on topics or what language. So, we kind of created the schedule, we made the agenda, and then we took the topics and said, all right, this is what we need, and, and, we, and we did that. Um, planning ahead for next year, we are going to continue our articulation with Park Lane teachers and the high school teachers. A um, couple weeks ago, we created our professional development schedule um, as far as our TLC meetings. Janice and I work together, and we're going to have the teachers from Park Lane, as well as the teachers from the high school meeting at least once a month. Um, we're going to work on completing common listening assessments next year in all of our courses, and the same is going to be true of the middle school. Um, we're going to focus specifically on <coughs> reading strategies. We're going to work with the literacy consultant and basic skills coordinator where we can 
we're actually planning a day that we're going to get together and, and organize our reading assessments and our questions <coughs> um, to make sure that they're cap like and more open-ended. Um, and we're going to be at least once a month to exchange instructional ideas and strategies for language teachers. That's our plan for next year. So what, what you see is that two years ago we were presenting five different some areas that we needed to grow in our world language department, we are growing there. Uh, also, I think what we see as a takeaway is our commitment to really strengthen and bolster our world language uh, department as a whole. And uh, uh, this work, you know, is a new curriculum last year, uh, is an annual ongoing process of really just in the department. Are there any questions? Any questions from the board? Could, could I just ask, the, um, really along the vein of you're, you're willing to change from the from the uh, curriculum that was presented last year because of what you've learned this year. I mean, what if you were presenting the curriculum right now? What would be different than what you presented last year? I, I think none of the curriculum standards have changed, but um, the sequence of us. Uh, teaching them in the sense of the pacing of it uh, has changed uh, and some of our outcomes to be a little more consistent uh, have changed. And so when we talk about trying to make sure that the curriculum is viable and there's a coherence uh, around, around the district, mm -hmm. uh, by us having a six, seven, and eight scaffolded curriculum that has the same exit outcomes as a year one high school course, uh, really just ensures that hopefully through that experience in middle school we can have most of our children enter uh, year two of mm -hmm. the language. So um, that on top of the fact of having the ELC uh, and, and having the staff of the middle school and high school really work together to cash out what are those standards and expectations and how are they going to bring the curriculum to life are really the work that we've done and the work that we're going to continue. So the board adopted curriculum is the curriculum that we're teaching, but the way that we're doing it is much more consistent. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, uh, Just out of curiosity, when you did the uh, professional development as a presenter, did you get, did you find that you got much meaningful feedback that Maybe help you fine tune some of the things, or so I'm kind of curious how that works. We did actually. Um, we made evaluation. We gave an evaluation at the end and had people kind of give their feedback on what they wanted as professional development. So we had two different um, regional PDs. We had one that's over, um, which when we went to it was kind of a this is sort of what we want you to do and, and just try to sort of see how that goes. So we kind of followed a different agenda. And then at the end, we kind of got some ideas from our colleagues and said, what, what are you actually looking for in a, in a professional development? What would be useful <coughs> for you in your teaching and in your classes? What do you want to see presented on? And people came back with several ideas. And then from there, to create the CD that we did in November, we took ideas from different people and found presenters. And then people, colleagues among us, were able to present on specific topics. So it was it useful? It was extremely useful because we have relevant stuff where normally it's not, it's not necessarily geared towards for the level. So. How many languages are you anticipating dealing with? Well, currently we offer uh, Spanish, French, and Latin. Okay. And that's our current offering. Uh, and certainly we want to make sure it's a robust and, and uh, as strong as possible. Uh, and that doesn't uh, lay out that in the future we want to expand that. Mm -hmm. That's our current offer. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so I I heard from a little break uh, that the school has been um, cracking down or discontinuing many of these tests. Is that is that the case? Because I, I have to say, I, I, I participated in it. It was less than a more of like a, an emerging kind of trip um, where we attempted to teach the long term. And I have to say that that was um, incredibly helpful in my development as a teacher. And I know um, many of my 
Thank you for your comments and in response, uh, and I can make a few comments about what we, the presentation tonight, but I would like to just reiterate that this board has always uh, committed to helping with the world language uh, programs, and we've never in any way hindered uh, study abroad. We just want to be sure that all the policy and the safety measures are in place, so, um, and we've had good discussions and that the board is committed as is the administration to uh, not rushing in any way to study abroad program, but we need to be careful that all of our policies and our safety measures are in place. So I appreciate the comment. If I may, I would like to uh, just mention tonight that I think it's really crucial that the interaction between the high school and the middle school continues and that we look at the numbers we need to do uh, a good job in marketing world language throughout the district that we know that number of seats and this board and administration is committed to having a very robust world language study program. So I think the effort needs to be there that the um, high school and middle school, as you have pointed out clearly, that that communication and collaboration is ongoing and that the uh, welcoming the high school programs and trips to, to hear more about it at that at that age level, to do that interaction between the two. And then I would even suggest, and we've talked about this, even having like ambassadors go down to the younger grades and promote world language. And I'm not just saying it's a world <coughs> language study, but there's great research showing that studying of the world language at an early year is very successful, but that, that also helps with what exactly you're talking about with the professional learning development, with literacy, increasing SAT scores, the test scores. So there's a real advantage to continuing world language study throughout and having some continuity there. So we're happy to hear and to receive this mid-year report. I think the, the goal we have is to strengthen the program, strengthen uh, the study of what I would like to make one comment because I knew and then we're going to not find a way to bring it up. But as I was looking at the report and uh, listening to all of the different things that we actually accomplished this year, I thought she was going to forget to mention the mountain of paperwork and organization that it took to keep everything on track. We actually changed some of the things and if it had not been for a next time organizational skill and the entire of the effort uh, that we would have gotten as well as as it did. And you can choose to say that, so I would like to say it's more real and very more real effort because it was really successful. A very successful year one implementation. The collaboration between the two schools has been exceptional. Thank you. And so just a quick question. What's the students, what are the students' reactions to the new Platform. Do you find them getting more enthusiastic about taking a foreign language? Or? I, I, think, uh, I, I also wanted to say one thing, and I could maybe answer part of that and then also Don's question, because when, I, I think there was a question about the, how, why after the change last year were we adjusting for more this year than our curriculum. And one of the things is that last year there was a new standard for the AP Spanish exam. This year the exam uh, was entirely changed in French. And there's been a focus away from grammar being the key all and end all of your accomplishments in foreign language. And now it's much more conversational. And also because of some of the online learning courses that we've implemented, uh, they, they change the amount of time we can spend or have to spend doing certain activities in the classroom. So um, that's one of the reasons the curriculum has changed in some ways to align with what we uh, are now able to offer and to make the, the entire program more functional and powerful. Mm -hmm. And then uh, to an interest specifically the way the kids uh, are reacting to it very, very positively. And one of the things that we were talking about today is that some of the kids are, are actually addicted to collecting their... Collecting their, their, friends. Collect, collecting friends. <laughs> friends, 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 friends <laughs> when they're on live motion, it's actually not just a, 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 an ancillary material, but it's actually a worldwide community at the moment of over six and a half million language learners. And then so many of them might be in, a, in an area where your language that you're studying is natively spoken. 
And so you're plugging into that network, and when you're using Yahweh, you have uh, for all kinds of games that you might play on that, where the kids are honing their language skills in a couple of different corners. And you're not busy. But um, they're just having fun and learning at the same time. So you're talking to them, they're playing on Great. Thank you. Any other comments? Very no. Thank you very much for your presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So we have a double header tonight. <laughs> We're going to move from world language to uh, math. And uh, you have a curriculum that you received over the weekend to take a look at. And uh, knowing that you've dug deep into that curriculum, we have a presentation for you. Thank you. And, uh, then this is an 18 month process um, that uh, was really a, a, a very uh, substantive uh, revision. Um, the last year, the last time this was revised was 2005. <coughs> Since then, um, we have uh, gone through the state of the federal two big changes. Um, and uh, I want to just switch PowerPoints really quick and then uh, talk about that. And then I'm going to have uh, various members of our uh, staff also here. So, uh, switch screens here. And this was a process that really engaged uh, many of our teaching staff, folks from every grade level. And then uh, it actually culminated in a full day in this room with grade levels presenting to one another based upon the piloting of a variety of resources and, and ensuring that this curriculum was aligned to the Common Core. So uh, the background I was speaking about is, uh, you know, um, if we say, <clears throat> why do we have to renew curriculum? And like any profession, uh, medical profession or other professions, uh, we're always learning better ways to do uh, our, our, our job. And uh, certainly in education, uh, enhancing curriculum and a uh, better, more effective way of teaching is really our class. Uh, this, in the seven year cycle, uh, the state uh, adopted uh, sort of grade level expectations in 2007 and then 2010, uh, Common Core State Standards. So we really had to almost go through two paradigmic changes uh, from our current curriculum to bring it up to the higher standard. Um, the team, because uh, this book uh, was not done by a single individual, the team here uh, of 18 uh, faculty members uh, represents, uh, and the book represents uh, the work of uh, 18 faculty members over 18 months uh, with input from really all of our staff throughout the year. Um, and I'm going to ask Tracy Jadinsky, our math data skill coordinator for all of our elementary, to come up and help present the elementary component. Welcome, Tracy. Thank you. So we spent the summer, um, I had um, a teacher from each grade level um, working, uh, looking at the common core and writing up for the kindergarten through fifth grade, um, looking at the data gap analysis of what we're currently teaching and what we need to go in the future for that. So we looked at a bunch of questions and we unwrapped the standards um, so that we could make it where a first year teacher coming in would be able to pick up the curriculum and be able to know exactly what we were um, we've got taking rights and um, we looked at the resources that were available. When we talk about the gap analysis at your table, you'll see this handout here. And this really shows the, the major changes from kindergarten to grade 8 from our current curriculum to our new revised curriculum. And you can really see that we are changing the sequence from a very broad base, so thinly uh, mastered level to a tightened uh, base, a very deep level uh, curriculum. So the, the biggest thing we're going to do is the National Common Core, as I mentioned. Um, it's going to be different for teachers in the sense that instead of covering so many different objectives, that there are fewer objectives where
where we need to go much more deeper to get that deeper level of understanding. Um, and it does clearly run a progression from one grade to another. We really looked at what was coming before and then what was coming after. Um, K through eight. Um, so that would be something that I'm looking forward to seeing that can be the future as well. Um, the rigor is another area talking about going into depth and that um, then it's easy to do uh, particularly with algebra which I'm not touch on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> Fifth grade was enough for me. Um, we looked at uh, the new curriculum and the materials. There's uh, just as in the world language that technology piece is really huge now. So, so just on the Common Core State Standards, uh, really, uh, we, we touched on this earlier. We're really going much deeper uh, into concepts. We want mastery for all. We want them to really understand it at an application level, uh, not just a recipe followed with directions level. That's really the, the fundamental change. But I think we'll, we'll go deeper in the Common Core in other meetings. Um, and then to talk about uh, marrying the curriculum with our resources, instructional resources. Uh, so we, uh, with that committee, we looked at um, how we were going to staff able to, to pilot the material. We started with the first three that you see on expression, and the third is their grade one and the third grade teacher. Um, everyday math, and at grade two and grade five, and then math next year, in kindergarten and fourth grade, just to get a feel for the materials. And they started right in September and worked through January. We met again. And we talked at PLCs, and I had a lot of contact with those teachers throughout that time, um, how things were going. And, and we had a sort of rigorous rubric of um, things around the difference in instruction and parent components, um, how the uh, technology resources look, and we, we got all that together. And um, we sat with the committee, and they presented what they found. Since that time, the math connects. Um, they have an updated version that they started um, from the ground up with the Common Core and um, came up with a new program that is a copyright of something that just got published. And we were literally like, we're caught off the presses, and I got the rep in here and um, we met with um, all the teachers at the PLC meeting. And so we decided to have that along with some of the information we got on another. So what you can see here is that our committee of 18 that expands to our piloting teachers and that our, our uh, committee also reported at the grade level and really showed the draft of the curriculum and also uh, expressed the piloting resources. We really, uh, in picking these materials, really wanted to do an extensive investigation and have a large volume uh, of the faculty and our this investigation and a thorough review uh, that Tracy mentioned was about how we were going to evaluate it. And that expanded to even, uh, we want to just rush the decision. So we concluded to further our priorities to other other programs. We were looking for a continuity between the grade levels. Um, originally, the, the other program that was focused was the Singapore approach. Um, and we went through um, this grade and they, they got six and seven and eight. They're supposed to be in the comments, so we decided to go ahead and look at that because we just heard the things about that program as well. Um, and you can see by the list, we got a good, you know, sampling from most grade levels. And uh, we then met again with the piloting teachers. Um, we, we talked at PLCs and there was a lot of um, different communication from representatives. Um, talking and sharing. Um, here's, here's all of the people involved. Um, and the result, we decided to go with MyNAP program. It's tied in nicely through uh, through the state grade. And um, so, you know, the benefits of MyNAP are up here. Uh, and I'm curious to sort of allude to uh, the fact uh, that it's really uh, 
this is how it comes in the program. Uh, it has a nice security connection. The uh, print materials as well as the online resources are uh, just really afford uh, an increased learning opportunity as uh, similar to what we uh, mentioned with the world migration. Um, so uh, the materials for that are on the side table. Um, now that that is the action of the technical committee for the material section. Uh, and the technological resources, maybe we should just kind of encapsulate those two things that the elementary program affords us. Mm -hmm. uh, there's what's called Connect Ed, um, and it has the lesson design, it has the, the paper game student position, everything right on there. Um, Gary Edwards highlights the program and she um, knows it really, really well. Um, she can kind of jump in and she can if you have questions. I actually titled it myself. Um, but it has the assessment, assessment piece, um, and also there's a video library that has the short video clips and um, has instructional strategies. And they also have um, what's called that math of practices, which are also data files. There's data sets that are embedded in all of the lessons. And so that there are different um, videos and the document curriculum, which is the five resources, the key is really the professional development to really bring the program to life. And so often, um, a, a weakness of our current curriculum rollout has been that we buy the uh, material over the summer and then it's kind of like look, new materials for the teacher when they come back. Uh, we are able to ameliorate some of that disconnect by having some professional development uh, late night, uh, the previous and regimen first, for uh, three level teachers, um, where we'll be uh, showing them the online component, which has all the teacher resources, all the student resources, uh, by sharing with them uh, password and username uh, so that they'll have access over the summer for all the materials. Uh, so that will be the initial uh, support. Uh, they discuss the curriculum uh, in the various stages of development throughout the course of the year. So the curriculum isn't where it's a daunting uh, binder of the new alters that received uh, last week. It's, it's been a work in progress, progress for the teachers throughout the course of the year. There will be specific professional development next year. Uh, we, we figure the first two weeks of school, the teachers need to really learn and understand the you know, bonds with the students and then after that the second third week is when we plan on doing specific professional development on uh, each grade level and then that will be followed up through a year-long implementation support because uh, Tracy's focus will really be to work at least elementary school with teachers come and planning time and individually in the classroom with teachers ensuring that it's an effective implementation of this in that curriculum throughout the course of the year. And that schedule is being developed with three elementary principals and myself. I'm going to ask if there's any questions on the elementary, and then I'm going to be bringing up the middle and then the high school. But I, it's a comprehensive program, so I didn't want to wait for all the questions that I can ask. Um, so <laughs> I have a question. Um, at the elementary level, the hours in the school year that are devoted to math, I, 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 we've probably, I've probably seen that number somewhere before, but I can't recall it. And it's not, it's not my, my real question is, has it gone up or has it been going to, to, to this curriculum? Have we increased hours? Have we decreased hours? Are the same? So, um, from the SSC, historically, we spend about 75 minutes a day on, on math instruction. Uh, so we're not necessarily saying increase in the time because we have a fixed amount of uh, hours mm -hmm. in the school day, but what we are saying is that a lot of these online resources are going to expand the day beyond just the school hours uh, to afford us, and we'll be seeing this at the end of the presentation, uh, how powerful some of these uh, uh, video clips are 
and, and some of the uh, online resources to students can do. Mm -hmm. um, so we're thinking that, um, that that change, in addition to a very tightly uh, aligned curriculum, um, those variable changes will get some uh, good increase uh, in the future. But the actual class size hasn't changed in here. It has not. It has not. But, so you're okay. Um, what about the friendship schools? Because those kindergartners will be coming into the first grade here. Have any of those teachers, the kindergarten teachers, been, um, but do they plan on going to the professional development? So, uh, once we have, uh, once we have, tonight, uh, we have a group approved, then the kindergarten curriculum becomes the friendship schools curriculum. Uh, so, we have had, uh, Last CLC meeting, uh, the water for teachers went to the friendship school. Mm -hmm. We talked about uh, not only the draft, the, the draft of the mm -hmm. math curriculum, and we're also working on an enhanced language arts curriculum, so we're sharing the draft of that, which we will bring to you next year, um, with uh, a very mentioned standard state support party. Mm -hmm. So they'll be getting the curriculum content. Uh, Learn um, will be using slightly different um, resources. Uh, than us, um, but, uh, but using the same curriculum. So their TV looks slightly different than us, but the expectation, which is why they're in the same support part, is the same. So the friendship school kindergarten is going to be at a disadvantage going into first grade? It's just basically a comment, but first of all, I just think the comprehensive approach by using all of these teachers and getting input back is a great idea. Um, and I think you may have touched on this, uh, Greg, but when we when you gave us the report on the CMT and we identified particular band analysis of deficiencies where we might see that we needed growth, that was all taken into account when we put the new curriculum development into place and just wanted to comment about and the positive comments to see how that was implemented in. Thank you. Uh, for, for that, and uh, yes, so that gap analysis, that audit, was uh, really our present curriculum for the new, where our educational deficits are, and so some of, you know, we looked at all the, all the data from CMT, SAP, and SAT to really say what are the weak areas, and the curriculum for you uh, is, is our best plan to share up those uh, areas for your time. And thank you for this uh, pointing out because it's difficult to tell it's such a big so I think the board appreciates getting the breakdown and where the changes, the basis of major changes occur. Thank you very much for that. I didn't mean to this. Did I see any of you? Okay. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. One other question. I guess I have a follow up question. The, uh, you talked about the, uh, the class, classroom time, 75 minutes a day. And then the online time, students, online resources is, um, can we be successful in teaching or delivering this curriculum to elementary students only in classroom time? Or are we banking on students going on? I mean, because some students aren't. That's a great question. So, uh, all of our resources are, are in print. The online resources from a teacher's perspective uh, give them use of effectively use of permission boards. Uh, there's uh, uh, video clips uh, that the teachers can show during the day. What I was meant by the online resources after school hours, I think it's going to be a much richer, if you will, homework experience if some children can you know, go online and get some reinforcement rather than only doing uh, the, the print environment. Uh, but to address your question, the, the print materials are sufficient for effective um, implementation um, as far as the homework capacity is, is because I think the resources that they can be used online but John, for those students who need additional support with math, we have an intervention approach. Mm -hmm. So there, there are some students that will have more than yeah. 75 minutes a day of math. Yeah, I just wasn't sure I was understanding 
the extra online time at home because how we were depending on that to get to deliver this material. Tutorial. More in the tutorial. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. I'd like to invite uh, Dan Seltzer, a middle school curriculum leader, to help us uh, explain the Thank you, Jerry. Okay. Uh, I'd like to thank Tracy for uh, pretty much summing up what we did with uh, different textbooks. Um, where the process was very similar. Uh, we met last summer and we started to work through the curriculum. It's, it's a nice timing that the whole textbook um, process is coming up at the same time. I, I think for us it's been advantageous. Um, we we uh, focused on a number of textbooks at the middle school. There's eight middle school math teachers. Uh, we only teach math, so it's very different than the elementary school. And probably each of us had at least two or three different packages to kind of uh, play around with, if you will. And uh, it was a little bit difficult at times, you can imagine. Um, I have more textbooks, sample textbooks in my room than uh, I can imagine if anyone needs any, you know, three hours of books or anything. <laughs> <laughs> you know, basically, this is the same conference as the elementary school. We, we met weekly uh, to cover our, our normal topics of discussion, um, but also to kind of, you know, work together to make the best choice which package is going to do us the best service. Uh, and we didn't work alone, we did work with the elementary and the high school, you know, at a certain point in the year where we had to kind of decide, there's no like K-12 package out there, you think there'd be this great K-12 thing out there that everyone would want to buy, but it doesn't really work that way. The high school is just to make the correct eight courses. You know, we had to decide at the middle school that we want to move more to the high school or the elementary, um, because it really would, uh, you know, dictate where we were going to go with our decision. Um, and I think we probably ended up leaning a little more to the high school in some ways, but the textbook we chose really fits nicely with the elementary school. It's the same, um, basically the same sequence of material. It's really got a nice fit. Um, what's happened is we ended up choosing this book called Math is Focus, uh, pardon me, Math Connect. Um, it's a Glenn Cole, McGraw, Hill book. Um, you know, there was really a number of reasons that we lean this way. That those of us that piloted it, you know, found it. Um, well, a number of things. The best thing was this three-year sequence was perfect for our middle school. Um, up until now, we've, you know, um, we've had different textbooks with a different grade level. They never really close together. So this is perfect. Uh, of course, it's aligned with the new curriculum pretty strongly. Obviously, we didn't really pilot anything that wasn't. Um, but the model leadership was, like, incredible. Um, and I want to be clear, we're not using online textbooks in the middle school. Um, we're not ready for that. Uh, not every kid can access an online textbook, but uh, so we have, you know, the hope that these kids can you know, have a textbook to carry around and see what the school is about. <laughs> but the online textbook is there, it's the same textbook online, but the resources attached to it are, are really incredible. And I know when Bill comes up to show you the high school stuff, it's very similar to what we chose. Um, you know, there's uh, video tutorials for kids, there's uh, online assessments, which are, you know, kids can make practice problems, see how they did right away. If they need more practice, they know it. And they can have the school email to me. I don't have to grade them. Um, you know, I have that option. It, it, it just provides more opportunities for more practice. And I don't have to be the one sitting there making the problems for every single kid every single day. Um, uh, we can do it at home and send them work. Um, but I'll let Bill show you the online stuff. It's, it's, it's really incredible. Two other components. So you mentioned that you know, it's going to be filled with uh, textbooks. But, uh, if uh, children choose to access it online, then they're not necessarily having to lug a book back and forth uh, or over a heavy backpack. Uh, the second uh, thing, uh, you know, the middle school is really that uh, huge pin between elementary and high. What we did do is we made a conscious decision that uh, we begin to differentiate math instruction from middle school. And, uh, we're saying that we would hope that all uh, all of our students in the near future, uh, which is the majority, uh, get through algebra one at the middle school level. And so the middle school really uh, is the gatekeeper for our three algebra, and then the algebra, and then uh, the high school just uses those resources. So in the the high school uh, is using those resources, the middle school, the middle school, and the high school will have the same 
connected curriculum, the same expectations um, for those courses. The uh, middle school will offer uh, geometry, but that's primarily a high school course, so the high school really selected that material. But again, uh, the middle school and the high school will have the same resource um, and have the same effect. So uh, where uh, Dan was saying he's leaning more towards high school, we wound up with middle school, we are blending them strategically in some of our higher tracks. The other thing that I'd just like to reiterate is that the textbook and the resources are not the curriculum. That came second. The curriculum came first. What were the learner outcomes? What were the expectations? And what are the resources that bring to life the curriculum? So I think that's an important delineation. Curriculum came first, and then we identified those resources that support the curriculum. Questions in middle school? And we just might apply to any of them. Uh, in, in the language world, it's kind of like an online <coughs> language lab. I'm, I have my theory on learning a lot of these kind of subjects. It depends on your immersion, imitation, and assimilation. So like in the language lab, that, that's custom tailored for that. Has there been found any kind of corollary in the math uh, teaching world? Uh, there's, there's things that are close to that. Uh -huh. In, in, in essence, that's what we try to do all the time. That's why we mm -hmm. give all of for practice and then we give the quizzes. Yeah, well, I was right? thinking of uh, yeah, yeah. the online program. Yeah, I mean, there's some out there, but it's, it's not quite as... Not as I always yeah. think it's a little bit easier, you know. Uh -huh. It's a more direct approach, but, um, you know, the Khan Academy has all mm -hmm. kinds of, you know, they can watch a lecture and it's the same like, pressure I would give, but it's someone else with an extra year. Yeah, but that, that's not necessarily <laughs> <laughs> Well said. That's <laughs> <didn't tell me. laughs> But they also have online practice in that website. I mean, there's no shortage of websites. So there, there's an interactive option. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, our, our department head, Mike Ellis, uh, has a child, a uh, his own child's uh, performance tonight. So he could be here. Bill <laughs> Bassett, uh, a member of our high school math department, uh, kind of explain the selection of uh, the high school material and then actually show us what has come on resources. Um, to the uh, high school program, uh, we did shoot three separate, uh, we had three separate vendors come down to so look at the uh, two textbooks um, from Google, which is the burner um, on the floor book. Uh, we had Buzzgo come and we'll get to some of that. All of these companies uh, have read the writing on the wall of the software, and they're all there in their books. So um, we, we hear the same song and dance from many of them, and then and then it's, it's taking that. So what we decided to do is to uh, write these three companies in, right? Um, let's take a variety. Let's have a different teachers teach different ones, and then we'll also have the teachers teach what we have. And let's, you know, mm -hmm. kind of a kind of control of this kind of student. And we also had a new one um, last summer. Uh, we put together these teaching guides to kind of form the curriculum. Uh, we saw the changes um, to the high school curriculum, which are um, uh, I know I was definitely surprised when I saw some, some different things that are expected of high school students um, with this common course. Uh, and, and I think it's wonderful, right? But it's definitely uh, some changes which the textbooks are starting to highlight as well. Um, so, do the briefing guys, uh, teach the briefing book, uh, and crack them up. The other one. Um, and that really is you know, choosing a, a, a line of they're going to go back to the line of we want to really test projects and you know, see how they work. Um, and so we started to go through each one. We met at the we talked about them. We you know, interacted with each other and saw how it went. Um, and we started to come through and we eventually landed on the Burger Common Core as um, the, the, the choice that we felt fit the, what we needed out of the textbook to align with our curriculum um, and also had the future to really help with would help us um see our people's water for lands is not even that even better than we are so for uh Bill showing the online resources, I just wanted to mirror the secondary level professional development and the data again, and Bill said through the through the course of the year the PSD really the work has been sharing the drafts, uh, making sure there's an understanding 
uh, next year there will be very specific implementation support uh, in mid-September as well. And then the implementation support uh, beyond that, uh, we've been able to uh, look at uh, the high school schedule for next year uh, even earlier than we have in years past. And uh, through uh, the scheduling efforts, uh, we found that we could redeploy an existing uh, teacher half time to really become a math specialist. And uh, like the work that Tracy will do at the elementary level, this math specialist could work with teachers in common playing time and then in the classroom, ensuring an effective implementation. Now, when we talk about the secondary level, uh, that's two buildings, that's a lot of staff. So the focus for next year for that half-time position uh, because the person would be teaching um, the other half in that class of the high school uh, herself would be to focus with grade nine teachers and to really have a great understanding and, and a, having all the teachers really uh, go to the depth of the, the common core which we want. And, and the future goals would be uh, to focus on grade 10 and then the upper class computers. So uh, this is going to a great, this will be a great benefit next year to us. Um, I'm going to switch this to the internet and then I'm going to let Bill, if you want to get it right up there in the air, and you can't go at it. Go at it. Keep our right now. <laughs> <laughs> Show what these online resources are. So as, uh, as Dan mentioned, um, behind you you can see all these textbooks. I love getting the algebra ones down with the algebra too. Probably 35 pounds a piece. Essentially, but all of that can be fit on a bus. Um, that's, it, it's kind of where we're going. Um, and I think everyone kind of sees we're heading that direction. Uh, it's, it's an excellent point. We all understand not everyone gets a computer. It's, it's not possible. Um, the things on here are not able to replace um, the textbook, replace teaching and research and supplemental um, ideas here. And I think I'm on my page. I just have to read the question. Yeah. Here we go. So when a uh, student uh, comes on to uh, the page, you notice up here we have both pages, student resources, and video activities, and teacher resources. Uh, they, I think, get the first thing, they might be third, uh, but then the teacher gets all of, of, of these others. So what we were looking for um, is a couple of things I just wanted to demonstrate for you. Uh, Dan mentioned the uh, going home, practicing online, those kind of things. And what can happen here is you can come up with um, some, some just reports here um, on how students uh, do some online um, things here. So what happens is, is um, this is from um, Mr. Ellis' class. This is something I want to apologize. Sorry. No, terrible. Um, here we go. That's what I want. All right. So what happens here is um, Mitchell with his uh, job class, uh, he gave them an uh, template you know, working with uh, right triangles and whatnot. He's giving you a quick all right, his uh, his homework from above. I want you to go home and I want you to take an online quiz for me. And so what the students do is they head home and he assigns. You know, and open up the portal. You know, tonight at uh, you know, 3 o'clock, the school gets out until uh, 11 o'clock. Get this done. So, what happens is. And that, of course, affords the children who don't have the technology to use uh, study full time uh, you know, resources uh, at the library or to go yeah. to a lab and to use this uh, material. And so, when the students do take this, and the child says that's absolutely right, do you have the opportunity to change it? Oh, so. And so the second thing is, the cameraman is zooming back. There we go. <laughs> is the next thing is right here. I'm just going to put that quickly. Good. 
is well, what's happening here is um, I just clicked on an opportunity where uh, Dan says he doesn't have the great equipment. Sometimes you can be great, and that's tremendous. But one thing about this program that we really like is that I clicked on tactical, frequently this question. So Mike was knows the question number four. Forty-three percent of the kids miss that question. And if I were to click that, I won't because it's a good thing. But we'll see exactly who those groups are. Um, but you can also say, all right, question four, seven, kind of the back depth is what it is. Yeah, and before any kind of assessment, this is just, again, gathering more data. Gathering more data. What are they doing right? What are they doing wrong? And what can I do about it? So if you have this information for us, this is one of the things that we really like, um, that the students really enjoy. And uh, use in the lab uh, here. So or this this really allows then differentiation and really using the classroom instruction much more strategically for the same amount of minutes uh, to hopefully get uh, a different. Uh, so for the, under the teacher resources again, the large boxes back there. This is all everything that, uh, that we need um, as teachers. Uh, everything in those boxes, everything that was two sets of supplements we got are all now found online. Uh, a couple other things about this program we really like is you know, we have lesson plans, we have PowerPoint presentations, and we have more than that. Uh, and, and I've talked to them, and they really do a sharp thing to kind of help with that transition. Uh, one thing about this program is they have these practices, they do things. We did not do the you have the geometry of honesty of three different levels. These practices are already made to help us here for those kids. Also, they're editable. They're not editable. <laughs> Meaning, you can get in there, you can change things at any time. You can change for everyone about the work you put in. It's very handy. It's not can. It's definitely something you can change. Um, for the students, <coughs> well, I don't want to show that. Yeah, we have power presentations, we have all sorts of quizzes, all those things with the video, video yeah. and, that and, and then for the student resources. When the students come on, they have the same lesson here. What happens is that they have interactive practice quizzes, they practice with some different problem solving. And then they have a homework help section. And on this homework help section, on the homework help section, these are all sorts of different types of questions that you notice here. The little video link next to it, and Mr. Berger himself usually pops up. This is that tutorial, John, that I was talking yep. about. Yeah, that's right from Kimberly Nun. That, and, and it's not the whole thing; it's a short snippet. I don't imagine it was. Well, thinking backwards actually can be really useful in solving a lot of real-world, real-life applications. So to warm up to it, let's take a look at some simple examples. So here, I tell you that cosine of the angle A is 4 over 5. The question is, where is angle A? Is it angle 1 or is it angle 2? Well, let's see if we can figure this out. Let's just find the cosine of each of these angles and see. So cosine of angle 1 equals, well, angle 1, it's going to be adjacent over hypotenuse. So it's going to be 6 over 10. This is five down to 3 over 5. No. So therefore, uh, angle 1 is not A. So let's see if angle 2 is A. So let's find the cosine of angle 2. Well, that equals adjacent leg 8 over hypotenuse 10. And that should provide <laughs> the fourth bit. In fact, I see that this, this angle right here is in fact angle A. So it's perfect. And these kind of for the problem, you can get the whole lesson. It really tells you what students need to know. It's kind of like the night before it's new, which never happens. And they're just not quite getting a couple things they can have a little bit out. So, uh, if there's any other questions for uh, the high school level or K-12, let's hear from When you, in any one of the, the uh, any course, uh, uh, my question is really the high school, I think, 
more than the others. Um, when you're developing the criteria, is there a thought as to the class size? I mean, do you have a do you have a volume of material that you want to get through in a, either a semester or the whole year? Is there a thought given to I can deliver this material with the additional page that we have there to you know and with a nominal number of students or optimal number of students in the class? So, for example, I can do this with 20 students. I can't do this with 28 students. Is there that thought process? Yes. Uh, so towards that, uh, and um, uh, had conversations with Mr. Macrino uh, about the class sizes and the scheduling. We're, we're making a deliberate effort next year uh, to have our standard level classes smaller, uh, which means that uh, teachers will have a little more time to work with uh, the kids. We, we need that fundamental uh, mm -hmm. um, groundwork, and that does mean that some of our advanced knowledge might be slightly higher, but we're really just talking about maybe a, uh, an up to five child differential. Uh, but we are trying to really increase the learning expectation for all. And so we are making those deliberate scheduling uh, class decisions uh, on the uh, master schedule. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, is, is there is there a uh, is there a cheat sheet that goes along with each one of these curriculum you know, classes that that has those class size numbers? Do you have that? Um, we're I mean, I'm looking at, for example, statistics and probability. Is yeah. it, do you have somewhere a number that says, for this curriculum, for that class, the optimum number of students is 20? No, we don't. No, we don't. Uh, and all we can do is we, we know that we're trying to keep uh, the standard level classes a little bit lower than the uh, advanced classes, and, and we're working through the schedule. Um, we've been working through the schedule and you can share uh, the information about what those class sizes are um, in, in the fall. But the other thing, John, to keep in mind, differentiation isn't just for the elementary grades. You're looking at an 83-minute block within a high school class. Mm -hmm. There are some students, no matter how they're leveled, that are going to pick it up just like this. Right. Bill, as the teacher, is going to make sure he needs to push them further, and I might be the one that's struggling a little bit within that time frame a chance to have multiple activities going on and these resources I think really support that. Chris, can you just um, comment a little bit more on the math specialist piece? I didn't quite, is that just for the ninth? So, um, <coughs> like, um, like in, uh, language arts, we have a basic skill for in the early um, albeit only about 25% of their day is really for that teacher support. We have that in the system. For math, for elementary, we have a math basic school uh, who uh, this year does do some direct instruction to students. Next year, we're changing that model uh, for effective implementation where she will be in each of the elementary schools working with teachers coaching. At the secondary level, uh, we have uh, um, math um, support uh, for middle school, but that's really only for students. There's no, no teacher sort of support. And at the high school level, um, the teachers themselves give that support to the math lab, uh, which is the two intervention. So what we were able to do was uh, through scheduling, still keeping our class sizes, Watching for those, um, a half time teacher who will be able to focus, can't focus on 6 through 12 everything because we can't be to that stand. But what we can do is that teacher will be an outreach for all teachers, but the focus of the work is really going to be great. And our plan would be over a four year stand to truly give. Uh, regular ongoing support uh, for teachers uh, to, to, to have uh, just a very robust natural mental It is like having a personal trainer if you're trying to uh, work out. If anyone can have a membership, but to have that personal trainer really then keep up your, your capacity. 
Well, for example, the uh, example you gave us where 43% of the students might be achieving more than with the math specialist, be able to come in and give guidance to the teacher and how to get to the required to approach it. Uh, this is with no additional staff. It's within the staffing allocations in the budget. The other piece is the ninth grade class will be the first class taken the Common Core as being uh, the new state testing. And so our approach is to really start with that first class and really support the teachers, which will then benefit the students year by year, grade 9, then 10, then 11, especially with the introduction of the new curriculum that really is more rigorous. Thank you for bringing in the visual, really disturbing yeah. I think all of us were yeah. very impressed. I just want to thank uh, everyone who participated yeah. in this uh, math renewal, but in especially the members of the community. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Yeah, we do. Uh, we will take a motion on adopting approving of the massive uh, mathematics curriculum for many years would go from. <coughs> we don't need to. We don't. Just the math cases, so. So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second by seven. <coughs> More discussion? Hearing none, we'll move to vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you very much. Uh, takes us to our initial notification, and I hope after we heard tonight, we say 35 pounds each from the table. <laughs> look over there and take a look at the text. I think we have a reminder of uh, the uh, list of the materials, mm -hmm. and around you, uh, feel free to look at it, and if you uh, want to take any, uh, just let me know, uh, and then in June, we'll ask you to take action. For your policy, you would take action in June. June. We have uh, two new courses mm -hmm. that will be offered next year with your approval at the high school level. No additional resources with people and or supplies. And Craig, you may want to comment on these two courses. Yes, um, so um, our physical education uh, courses will be offered uh, through the uh, as a result of uh, regional TV. Um, and we talked about uh, the effects that other towns are doing. Uh, really, uh, so it's a great merit in uh, having a leadership course for uh, students. And uh, it means that what experience would be a semester course, it would be under the physical education department. Uh, the, uh, the goals and um, the essential uh, questions and uh, the scope for you. Uh, this uh, sportsman life uh, class I think is really just add uh, to an already very good uh, program at the high school level and uh, as a result, you can answer any questions and then uh, ask for the approval of this new course so that we can implement it. Uh, any questions from the board? I kind of have a question really. I just have a comment. I think it sounds really good. And I think we have a lot of students at Waterford High School that could really benefit from this. And it's, 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 it's going to be just, I'm just going to ask that, just for 12th graders, right? It is. And it's really uh, that type of stretch course that we're going to currently have mm -hmm. uh, that, again, um, through the efforts of the regional TV, uh, we learned uh, a great thing some of the mm -hmm. things we're doing and, and that that Part of our is it only going to be one block? One class, though? Or is it well, that would be one section? Right? Driven by enrollment. Oh, okay. So uh, once approved, we'll, we'll look at the enrollment and I can get back to you in the fall. Oh, so it's possible to have more than one section? Oh, good. Okay. Can I make this point out? To read that the students, while they'll be trained, they will not be involved in the assessment of other students. They're there to participate and help, and they will also be trained by, there'll be a portion of the course of training themselves to work with the other students. Right. 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 Right.
uh, and, and that just really uh, adds value to a lot of other future programs like that. And it's done by water to the announcement is that with the 12th graders, how will we be choosing? So if you see the like if you have more, there will be a certain... We'll be in the way. And just like any other class, we have to look at the master's care right. in order to make this determination. And then you're... Just so one more thing. Are they going to be required to take a first aid course, too? Along with this, like coaches have to? Or? Well, um, it's not required. Okay. Um, there are some basic, uh, but not certification-wise, uh, level knowledge. So, uh, you know, uh, they'll be under the under the auspices of a classroom teacher, who then would be that legal. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Okay. Well, maybe both of them, if, if you're favorable towards both the second and the uh, okay. jazz ensemble. So, Sid Wayne, uh, and Cervante uh, uh, has uh, looked at uh, the current uh, program of studies for music and really is uh, just enhancing uh, a program uh, by uh, changing the symphonic almost collection that we currently have and uh, morphing it to more of a jazz ensemble. Uh, and so uh, due to the, the rationale um, for the change in the history of the program, uh, what the credit would look like for one credit class and what the scope of the goals are. And so uh, again, um, this is really uh, our music department said um, looking at the current program and all these times in this uh, So, again, I'll try to answer the questions and uh, for approval of this so that you can make it in the fall. Thank you. With first name's name. So, <laughs> um, so, what he wants to do is are we eliminating the symphonic band as a class, as a credit class? That's what we and, and replace it with the jazz. And replace it with the jazz. Of course, they do want it in Tuesdays and Thursday nights, so Thursday nights as it is now. To make it a credit class. Right. Uh, so they would still have music theory and, and uh, jazz improv. That's what it says. That's what it says. Symphonic band with those. Symphonic band has always been a little bit different than concert band in a sense. Uh, is he going to maybe pick kids out of the concert band to make a, a smaller ensemble, let's say, with the symphonic band, or is he just going to eliminate symphonic talk? Do you know that at all, Don? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the symphonic and orchestral bands will be symphonic. Okay. So, it has the opportunity to increase the rigor for that ensemble because the kids that are playing at a higher level will be working alongside the students who were formerly in the entry level band, so they'll be working together. This has an opportunity for the kids who want to press a bit further, uh, and we're doing it in the evening, sort of as an aside, uh, to do it formally during the course of the day. And given the busy schedules we hear about, and you've heard about it through the that I spoke about tonight. Um, this will give an opportunity during the day where if they want to enjoy the jazz ensemble, they're going to be able to do it formally and for credit rather than as more or less an extra group. Well, I'm personally, I think it's, it, it, it's kind of an upgrade in a sense. I think when I, when I look at the music that you're seeing around uh, with the different schools, the colleges, I think that they're often, I think you're seeing a lot more of the jazz influence more so than symphonic. And I'm not knocking symphonic because Chris has good experience with that also. Um, I, I just think that if you can move on from that, uh, you know, a lot of colleges look at that jazz. Um, it's 
So this is, uh, again, our department has really worked in the computer program. We will be going under a uh, curricular review to try to enhance the scope of our overall that we wanted to uh, afford the, the students to fall with the topic. And we'll also report back to you mm -hmm. for the implementation of both. I'd like to make a motion to approve both that we've been speaking of the athletic experience and the jazz ensemble. Second, second by David. Thank you. If there's no further discussion, we'll move to vote. All those in favor of the two programs, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? That motion is carried. Thank you. That moves us right to the um, possible adoption of the discipline code for Parkland Middle School handbook and for the Waterford High School student handbook for the 2012-2013 year. I believe there are no changes at the high school. Right. And we may, once we move into the new high school, come with some revisions that would make sense uh, in a new building. Mm -hmm. uh, and then uh, Mr. Sachs and Ms. Lynch put together the highlights of some very minor revisions at the middle school. And as been the practice, uh, we bring these to you at the May meeting or June uh, for your uh, endorsement. Any comments from the board? I'd just like to say thank you for making a reference to the board's policy. Um, okay. I move that the board approve the discipline codes thank as you, presented. Second to that motion. Second. Second by Jody. Any comments? Hearing none, we close the vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? That motion is carried. Moving us on to. Um, Discussion and possible action on tuition rates for 2012-2013. One of the things I'd just like to comment on, this would now align the tuition rate with the actual cost of education here in Waterford. And that has not all that has not always been the practice. And when both Ron and I reviewed this, I think it's appropriate. Mm -hmm where we have so many students that are placed from other communities, mm -hmm. we then charge those communities for education. We ought to be charging the real cost. Right. So if we do this in alignment with the per pupil cost, uh, it makes sense. The other thing in doing the research, we have no tuition students from other districts that are opting to come here. So this would be the time to make the change. It would be fair and equitable. And so that's why you see the change uh, in this proposal. Any comments from the board? I think it makes sense. <coughs> Thank you. Um, is there no comments? Would someone like to make the motion? So moved. Thank you, Anne. Second. Kevin? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion is carried as well. Take the right to the Finance Committee of School oh, um, Excuse me. School calendar, 2012 to 2013 school year calendar. Uh, Greg put together a cover note uh, with suggested changes. This was our first year with uh, complying with the state initiative to provide uh, conferences at multiple times during the school year. Uh, prior to the adoption of this calendar, we had yet to initiate the spring conferences across the board with lots of feedback from not only teachers and parents and administrators we look through uh, the timing and the frequency and we think that uh, this is the right direction to go in and again we'll present this to you with a calendar for next year but you'll notice a change in the number of days as well as the timing uh, so the experience was a positive one and uh, we had lots of discussion over the course of the year as to the right approach Thank you. The board has the calendar in front of us. You have to. Yes, right here. Okay. I, I do. There was, well, let me ask the board. Do you have any comments about the calendar changes? Just one on the right on the conferences. There was a little bit of change that was fine. All the parents agreed. So, yeah, the first one. The first one was the one that had a conference for all. And in the spring, uh, we really moved into more of an invite only. Not to say that a parent uh, couldn't have access to a conference, but 
we really want to focus the, uh, the spring conference for the children that are getting uh, extra support, and, uh, either through one or two through uh, intervention. And so, really, uh, what's the progress that the child is making, and uh, how can we strengthen the home school connection? And that's why I think the invite only in the spring uh, would be a welcome change. Okay. The other thing is just keep in mind our, our teachers are available anytime uh, to meet with parents throughout the course of the year, just not during these scheduled times. Right, and that, that was the reason I brought it, that it's just the parents are still being welcomed. Absolutely. If uh, they don't need to, it's not a magic. Excuse me, Kevin. Uh, just one thing that I We usually try to strive to have a resolution in the last school. Has that been the practice here in Waterford? Uh, we've traditionally done it on Thursday, and I know we have a graduation on Friday, and I think I'd really like to recommend that we uh, try to avoid having a Friday graduation at the high school because um, it, it does interfere with um, members of the community that. Um, I know things are probably actually going for this year, but I really think it's something we should try to. I think we've always tried to avoid that in the past, and mm -hmm. I think we probably should um, be sensitive to that and look at that in the future also. Yeah, and I want you to know that we did have that conversation, and we wanted to be sure that the uh, graduation had concluded before uh, sundown. So we did engage in that conversation. The other thing is, is uh, how do you go through a school year without a snow day? Was <laughs> 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 yeah. Any other comments from the board? Okay, hearing none. Would someone like to make the motion? So no. Thank you, uh, Jody. Is there a second? Yes, Thank you. Any other discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor of adopting this calendar, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? That motion is carried as well. Move us right to our finance committee update. Maybe what I could do is uh, just kind of highlight members of our finance committee prior to tonight's board meeting next to take a look at uh, where the current budget resides. And uh, both Kathleen and I will ask Ron Fedor if we could be put on the agenda at the June 13th Board of Finance meeting, June 13th, the next meeting. If that's what we saw, at least on the town website. But we'll be very flexible if it's a different night. <laughs> Uh, one of the things that we want to do is meet with the Board of Finance two or three times during the year and share with them where we are financially, how things are going, and prior to the end of the school year, that's one of the things that we want to do is report to them the status of things. Uh, having a warm winter, we certainly have avoided some costs uh, with utilities, but also dealing with uh, some other challenges. We have a number of areas where uh, we needed to expend more dollars in those particular accounts. And one of the real positives uh, to help us through this particular fiscal year was additional excess cost money that we'll be receiving from the state. And so one of the things prior to the closeout is we want to uh, provide the Board of Finance with an update uh, on the status of our budget. Um, we will be ending the year in the black. That's the great news. Thank you. Any questions or comments concerning the Finance Committee report? Mm -hmm. We did, did talk about uh, <coughs> the uh, really benefit to having uh, the online uh, components of the math program uh, and that's going to uh, require uh, some additional funds from uh, the textbook, uh, and we, we look at that uh, at the level, uh, so that we could uh, do a implementation all next year and, and not scaffold it out over three years, because again, we're utilizing this year's money and July's money for our current textbook. Thank you. Is that clear to the board? 
-hmm. So there was a consensus <coughs> on the finance committee to move forward. One of the things that's always a challenge, is, and I've shared this before, we have a seven-year curriculum cycle. Uh, with, in particular, certain uh, core curricular areas, we probably need to shorten that. One of the things that was not available to us in the past were these online resources that you saw tonight. Uh, the last time the math curriculum uh, was adopted, there were no online resources. We now have them available. And so uh, the Finance Committee took a look at the budget and, and how could we get at those resources for the upcoming school year. So a combination of both this year and the new fiscal year, July 1st, um, would allow us to make that happen. Um, as Mr. Diller said, we will be presenting that to the Board of Finance. So in essence, we'll be approving here, if you approve the committee report, you're approving that, this is, that we would actually move that uh, end of the year balance and use that to implement our curriculum on the online resources and the presentations that we saw this evening. I just want to be clear, everyone understands as we approve this uh, report. Okay, and then we'll bring that forward all the information and all the figures to the Board, uh, Board of Finance on June 13th. Mm -hmm. okay. Right date right now. Okay, so if that's clear, may I have a motion to accept the uh, Finance Committee report? So can we do it in the, uh, the Finance Committee? So moved. Yes, <laughs> so moved. <laughs> Second. Second. Okay. Is there any more discussion? Okay, now we'll move to vote. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Thank you. And for your information, we do not have a executive session this evening. So, did you want to come in? Uh, we don't need an executive session tonight. <laughs> However, we may need one sometime between our next meeting. And I just right. wanted to remind you that we are meeting on the 28th. You'll note that we're meeting at 5 o'clock. It's a board retreat. Um, and the reason why you had an action-packed agenda tonight was for that purpose. Uh, there is really no formal board meeting in, um, in June. Uh, that's a night where the board will review its goals, also evaluate the superintendent, and uh, that's the plan. Thank you. Bill and Mr. Beller and I met and said, let's put this agenda together so we have plenty of time at our retreat and evaluation to really look at our goals to see where we are and do our, to do our assessment. So I thank all of you tonight for making the motion so we're not too delayed. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, with that, I can... Oh, no, I'm to it right now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> all those in favor? Uh, we are now returned. Thank you. I'm <laughs> <laughs>